Now let's solve some systems. I'm going to take a system, encode it as a matrix, use row operations to put it in reduced row echelon form, and read off the solutions. I'll be very pedantic here, trying to show each row operation step and the strategy I use. Let's get started. This is the first system. I translate it into a matrix as I showed last week. Using zeros for the variables that didn't show up in the equation, such as x in the last equation. Now I want leading ones. Happily for me, the first row already has a leading one, so I can work with that leading one. Once I have a leading one, I want the entries above and below it to be zero. There are no entries above this leading one, but there are two below. There is a three right below it. I want to get rid of this three. How? Well, I have to use row operations. In this case, I will subtract 3 times row 1 from row 2. Row 1 multiplied by 3 is a row with 3, 0, 3, and 12. So I subtract those numbers from row 2. In the first entry, 3 minus 3 is 0. In the second entry, negative 1 minus 0 is still negative 1. In the third, 2 minus 3 is also negative 1. And in the fourth, 0 minus 12 is negative 12. So I get this matrix. Now the first column is finished. It has a leading one and below it, it has all zeros. I move on and look for another leading one. And I see a leading one in the third row. I could work with it in that row, but I like working from top row down. So I'll switch the second and third rows. Now I have a leading one in the second row. I want to clear its column. Above, there is already a zero but below there is a negative one. I want to get rid of this negative one below. How do I do that? Well, I add the second row to the third. That operation will get rid of the negative one. In the first entry, I'm just adding zero to zero and zero remains. In the second entry, I add one to negative one to get zero. In the third entry, I add negative five to negative one to get negative six. And in the fourth entry, I add negative 3 to negative 12 to get negative 15. Now I have this matrix. There are leading ones in the first and second rows, and both of their columns are finished. Everything else in their columns is a 0. Now I want a leading one in the third row. To get this, I divide the third row by negative 6, which produces a 1 in the third entry, and 15 over 6, or 5 over 2, in the fourth entry. Now I have a leading one in the third row. I need to make the other entries in its column zero. There are two entries to remove here, the one in the first row and the negative five in the second row. To get rid of the one in the first row, I subtract the third row from the first row. The first two entries are just subtracted zero so they don't change. The third entry is one minus one, so it becomes zero. And the fourth entry is four minus five over two, which becomes three over two. Now I want to get rid of the negative 5. To do that, I add 5 times the last row to the second row. In the first two entries, I am adding 5 times 0, which is just adding 0 so nothing changes. I add 5 to negative 5 in the third entry to give me the 0. And finally, the last entry is negative 3 plus 5 times 5 halves, so plus 25 over 2, which gives me 19 over 2. Now I am done. This is the reduced row echelon form. And I can just read off the solutions. The leading ones turn back into the variables, and the values that are on the other side of the dividing line are constants. So this means that the first row is x equals 3 halves, the second row y equals 19 over 2, and the last row z equals 5 over 2. And this is the solution to the system. Using just the three row operations, I've manipulated the matrix into one where the solution is obvious. This is the algorithm. Another example here. Here is a system, and here is its translation into the matrix. Again, note the zero for y in the second equation, since there were, was no y in that equation. I want a leading one. To get that, I'll divide the first row by two. And I'll be a bit faster on the arithmetic on the second example, not explicitly speaking every calculation out, but instead focusing on the strategy. 
So I divided the first row by two and now I have a leading one in the first row. I need to make the entries below that leading one zero. To do that, I first subtract four times the first row from the second row to clear the four at the start of row two. Multiplying by four means that I'll add two to the second term, negative six to the third term, and two to the last term. This is the result of that arithmetic. Now I also want to clear the negative three below the leading one. To do that, I add three times the first row to the third row. That will get rid of the leading negative three and change the other three entries by the appropriate arithmetic. Now I have this. The first column is finished, and I want to get another leading one to proceed. I can divide the second row by negative two to get a leading one in that row. So I have a leading one in the second row. I need a zero above and below that leading one. To clear the one half above, I subtract one half times row two from row one. The zero at the start doesn't do anything. The one half minus one half will clear the second entry and the third and fourth entry arithmetic produces this matrix. Then I clear the negative three halves below the leading one. I do this by adding three halves times the second equation to the third equation. The zeros don't change, the negative three halves plus three halves in the second entry will give the zero I wanted, and then the appropriate arithmetic on the last two entries produces this. Now, the first two columns are finished. I need a leading one in the third row. The arithmetic is getting a little bit annoying now, but that does happen. I divide the last row by negative 31 over four to get a one at the start. Negative nine over four divided by negative 31 over four produces nine over 31. Then I need to clear the entries above this leading one. Again, the arithmetic here is getting tedious, but bear with me. I subtract one quarter times the third row from the first row to get one quarter minus one quarter in the third entry, which will be zero. And the last entry will be seven quarters minus one quarters, one quarter times nine over 31. That arithmetic produces this matrix. Finally, I add seven halves times the last row to the second row, and that will clear the negative seven halves in the third entry and give some complicated arithmetic for the fourth entry. But now I have reached the reduced row echelon form. I can read off the solution. X equals 51 over 31, 52 over 31, Y equals negative 46 over 31, and Z equals nine over 31. One more before this video is finished. And now I'll just go through the operations without really talking about the arithmetic. Here is a system and its matrix version. I see there is a leading one in the second row. Since I'd like to start from the top, I'll exchange the first two rows. Then I clear the entries below this leading one. To clear the two at the start of row two, I subtract two times row one from row two, and that arithmetic produces this matrix. Then I subtract five times row one from row three to clear the five at the start of row three. Now this is interesting. I get a multiple row. Row two and row three are exactly the same. I am allowed to add or subtract one row from another, so I can subtract row two from row three, and this cancels out all of row three. But a row of zeros is fine in reduced row echelon form, so I keep going. Now I want a leading one in row two, so I divide row two by negative 14. There is a leading one. Now I want to clear the four above that leading one, so I subtract four times row two from row one to clear that leading one. Having done that, this is now in reduced row echelon form. I can't do anything more to the third column since there are no more leading ones to construct. This is finished. Now I just read off the solutions. But this is a bit tricky. There are still variables. What's going on? Well, what is happening is that the column without a leading one, the Z column, is going to represent a free variable and there will be infinitely many solutions. But I will leave the details to that interpretation to the next.